Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the next to last session of the uh, budget for the city of Salisbury for 2022. Um, what we'd like to accomplish this morning, we first will have a uh, update on some procedural things from Mr. Sullivan. Uh, then um, Julia has uh, a couple of changes that uh, she would like to have made for uh, for the budget. We'll go over those, and then we'll cover the fee issues. And depending on what time we are, uh, we'll see if we can cover cover some of the other issues that remain for us. Uh, if that's okay with everybody, um, I think uh, Michael. I think we have you have the floor. Uh, if you can walk us through um, some of the procedural things that happened last night and what we have to do going forward. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, in terms of what's necessary to move forward, there is no additional steps that need to be taken in, in so far as this, all three budgetary ordinances are set for second reader two weeks from last night. Uh, with respect to the uh, fee ordinance and the vote that was uh, three nays to two eyes, I believe, with the ultimate accounting, that was a vote to approve the ordinance as amended. There was a vote made to amend the ordinance specifically to add two additional fees that were attributable to the sale of fireworks. That amendment was approved. Then the ordinance was called to approve or for it to be approved as amended. That vote failed. Accordingly, uh, the fee ordinance for FY 2022 remains exactly as it was approved on first reader, and that is what is scheduled for consideration on second reader. If I summarize that accurately, Ms. Nichols? Thank you. Yes, that's exactly how I saw it. Is there anything you would like me to add, Mr. President? No, I think I think that that's that's clear. I just want to make sure that we were all all on the same page with that. Um, do any of the council members have any questions about that? No, I think we just bring that up. What at the amendment again? Yes, if yeah, you are ahead. interested in making sure that the two fees attributable to the sale of fireworks are included in the fee ordinance for FY 2022, the proper thing to do would then be to, uh, once that ordinance is put on the floor, the there is a motion made to amend the fee ordinance to add the two additional fees attributable to the sale of fireworks. I, I, I Now I know I'm going into territory where I'm explaining things you all know very well. Uh, then there's a vote uh, to approve the amendments. That vote passes. Then there is a vote to approve the ordinance as amended. If that vote fails, then there is a vote to approve the uh, ordinance as approved on first reader. Uh, either way, there's a vote to approve that ordinance for second reader with or without the two additional fees attributable to the sale of fireworks. Great. Michael, thank you. I think that clarifies it for everybody. So we, we should be okay from here. Um, and um, I think that from the legal aspect of it, we don't, we are not gonna have any more issues today. Uh, we're strictly gonna talk about the budget. So feel free to hop off. We appreciate you coming on and clarifying that for us. That's all right. If, it, if you don't mind for the next 45 minutes, I'm gonna read out loud to all of you. I was practicing this at home last night so I would really like to show off uh, some of my skills, which I think are new and improved. So That's just bear with me. Good. Everyone take a deep breath. Talk to you later. Have a great evening. Thank you, Mike. Thank day. you, Michael. Uh, Julia, I, I hope you had your finger on the mute button, but that's all right. Um, okay. Uh, Julia, why don't you take us through some of the uh, changes that you would like to uh, uh, put forward? Sure. Well, good morning, Council, and I always have my finger on the mute button, so 
be careful. <laughs> um, the, uh, before I, I hand it over to Keith to get into the, the nitty gritty and to give you the overview of where we are, um, I wanted to touch base on the proposal uh, for the human services division that we talked about last time uh, that was request for more, um, more information, more of a framework. Um, which I completely understand. Um, so for the moment, uh, we're, we're going to pull that out uh, of the budget. And so we were um, funding that with the uh, federal stimulus money. Um, so you'll see a, a wash uh, there because it was 150 on revenue from the federal government and then 150 out on our side. Um, so that, uh, that is, is now reflected in the budget. Um, and then uh, I think, um, Keith, I was going to hand it over to you, or um, Andy, do you want to hit on, on the career ladders real quick before we give it to Keith for the overall um, where we are? You're muted. Andy. Um, when we were working on budget this early spring, we were uh, finishing up some of our career ladders and some of our market rate adjustments. Um, those weren't wrapped up with a bow at the time of our first presentation. So instead of making it messy, uh, we did not include all of that into the first round. That is uh, now in the finance adjustments at the end. So you'll see um, that in Keith's presentation. Uh, market rate adjustments and career ladders. Um, market rate adjustments would be most of the positions at the bottom end of the pay scale um, that are still below or were below $15 an hour. We wanted to adjust those up to at least $30,000 in salary per year. Um, and then our career ladders, um, some were implementing new career ladders and some were just adjusting um, some of our, our current framework for our career ladders. Um, and then there was one um, additional adjustment uh, specifically for PD, uh, part of their reorganization um, based off of some of the property room um, issues we've had, uh, we, we reclassified a couple positions to make uh, some stronger oversight there. That's included in this. In this final financial adjustment. I think I hit everything. I don't know Keith looks like yeah, he's so, on the phone. Right uh, yeah, Keith's on the phone. Uh, but when he's off, he can um, pull up the spreadsheet and give us the overall where we are. Um, we, um, yeah, so they can tell us where we are. So hopefully he gets off in a minute. <laughs> he hears us talking about him. <clears throat> Keith, uh, do you mind bringing up the spreadsheet and uh, taking us for a little walk through where we are? Yeah, here it goes. Thanks, Keith. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hi, so good morning. This is uh, the plus and minus sheet. And I um, only, only picked up several things to post during the uh, sessions from Cancel. Uh, there are these top three. Uh, if it's okay, we can come back to those. I was going to go over some adjustments that um, Andy's introduced and that um, that <clears throat> we made um, since since the uh, mayor's budget was issued. This is the uh, career ladder and market adjustment. You can see it had a price tag of one hundred and thirty-seven thousand nine fifty-three. The uh, there was in the traffic department. There was an adjustment needed for 17646 to true that up. Uh, the media specialist uh, had a health care uh, change that came to our attention that was $4,000. <clears> there were some adjustments for the revenue uh, to Zoo uh, Commission to bring, to bring in uh, all of the revenues that they used to book. And then they gave us some of the expenditures as well so that we're gonna take on some of the responsibility that uh, previously the Zoo Commission had. And those are the amounts that uh, uh, of activity that will come to the city. The fire department uh, had, uh, we previously thought uh, that due to the stipend adjustments from the county, they may be able to uh, reimburse us for $53,607 of contributions they previously had committed to, but um, the chief informed us that uh, they'd be able to uh, make the full payment in 22, but they couldn't make up the payment for 
uh, 21. So we had to back that back out. But then since then, uh, we've determined that we may attribute that to uh, recovery funds uh, and that we may be able to get reimbursed um, from, from the Recovery Act. So we've added that back. Uh, so it's going to not be a donation, but it will be um, expected to be reimbursed by the recovery fund. Um, about 10 years ago, we had a, um, a transfer of our retirement program from the regular retirement system to the LEOPS. And at that time, some credits were due to the city that they amortized over uh, uh, eight or nine years. I, I don't remember the exact number of years, but uh, in 22, we will receive a, a significant credit that's not factored in when we use the rates to calculate the retirement amount. So we've 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 brought in that re, that credit that we'll be, we'll be receiving at the end of the year for LEOPS, and that's a, a credit of 100,000. Uh, we reduced the surface maintenance uh, allocation, the amount that we budgeted. Uh, by $44,654. Uh, we did that to cover some of these adjustments to make, uh, to make it come out zero. You can see we started with a surplus use of 2.4 million and these adjustments all balance out to zero. So we're not bringing a, a, any additional burden to surplus by any of these adjustments because we balanced it. And part of the way that we balanced it was to reduce the, uh, the allocation for uh, surface maintenance. Um, the, uh, uh, fire, the police department had, had been notified by the county that there was an additional uh, amount needed for administration of $7,000. Uh, the stormwater what was, for fee. What was that for, Keith? Did they say what uh, that was for? That's for yeah, our I partnership at the Human Rights Society. We oh, okay. uh, have to okay. pay about a fifth um, between the various entities in the county, and they gave us the wrong number. Gotcha. Okay. We still had time to fix it, so. Uh, you, in each fund, we uh, trued up the stormwater expense. The city bears some of the uh, expense for uh, the fees we, that we issue to ourselves for stormwater for all impervious properties. And uh, that's to true that up. Uh, when we, You'll see that we uh, removed the human service department and we also had uh, previously allocated uh, revenues to be reimbursed for those human services. So that's a wash. We, we took out the recovery funds and we uh, took out the expense that Julia went over earlier today. Now, all the rest of these items that are here are just reclassifications where we uh, move, move some items to the proper account. So all of these that uh, from here down, we're just uh, getting, uh, getting budget into the right account. So that's a summary of the finance adjustments that we that we wanted to uh, make you aware of, and and then we had these three items that uh, council had identified as plus minus that you wanted to revisit. And the first one was uh, the, the fire department's internet, previously funded by volunteers for six thousand. We had the deputy fire inspector, and then we had some related inspection revenue that would result if that, that deputy fire inspector was brought on, brought on board. That's to be TBD, right? Yes, these three are not in. They, everything else is shown as uh, at this time to be put in. And if it, if, if it stayed this way, um, there's been a, uh, a balanced uh, adjustment of the revenues and the expenditures are equal at the uh, council level at gotcha. this time. Okay. So Thanks. let's handle those three like we normally do at the end to see if we can come up with anything. Let's, let's cover some of the other stuff first. Um, but let, does anybody have any questions on what Keith just presented? 
we'll go through by uh, by roll call. Mr. Boda. No, uh, just great work, Keith. I'm working those out. Thank you. Uh, April. Questions? No. Thank you. Angela. Is, I don't know if anyone got clarification on this, but and, and maybe this is a more of a Michelle question. She asked about the, um, and I thought it was put on the list for, to be determined about the Poplar Hill lift. Um, does anyone remember that at all, or is it just me? I remember. I've got a, I've got a, a bunch of stuff written down that I, I was going to look for when we do that when we go after we finish all these. Things. Okay. Okay. Over and I'm not sure. I do recall a discussion about it. Um, I, I'm, can we wait until we get to, through these? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Michelle, any questions on these? No, not on this. Okay. I have one. Um, Gleesop, after the $100,000, uh, what is the, where's the status? Where are we in that? Does that clean that up or? Uh, so for the, for the, since that was transferred every year, uh, they, they have issued us a credit of, of $200,000. And um, every year they issue what the rate is gonna be for uh, the contribution required due to the retirement. We, we, we okay. enter that rate into the system and it's that rate's been applied to every line item without regard to that uh, now the credit is for 200 i've i've issued it for 100 that's because sometimes we don't acknowledge it at all it's it's a safety net that's been built in you know built into the budget for years we grabbed a hold of it this year because we we, we needed it to balance um the, the the line items that are here gotcha okay so that that will continue uh, annually as we go forward uh, well, it, we're, we're close to the end. Either this is the last year in 22 or 23. I can let you know, but we're, 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 we're either at the end in 22 or we're, we're, it, it's, it goes for one more year. Okay. Could you, yeah. Could you check that out and then see what the, yeah. and see what the, I, the like, I assume the balance is a hundred thousand that would be left. Well, it's too, it's, it's, a, it's approximately $200,000 a year. Um, but sometimes the other account has, so it's, it's, it's a complicated process. The, the retirement system, uh, uh, we get a bill annually that's based on the salaries. So sometimes we have people come and go. So there's an adjustment at the end of the year. Like there's the people that are coming. Yeah, yeah, coming and going. So we might have a we, we we might have a positive adjustment. We've never had one that was to the tune of a hundred thousand dollars. But so that I've left the rest of that credit while the credit is two hundred thousand. I haven't budgeted that because that we may need that to offset some of the adjustments for people that are added or subtracted during the year. Gotcha. So okay. the total credit's two hundred, but we budgeted a hundred to to in our to appropriate. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, I think that uh, that answers those questions. Um, and then, like I said, we'll come back to talk about the top three, either at the end today or at our final adjustment, which is where we usually do it, um, to see if anything else comes up before then. Um, but right now, I think we should focus on the fee issues, because um, I know that that's still a, a significant issue that we've got to handle. Um, so what I will do is um, open the floor uh, to the council members and we'll go in order and please identify the issues that you have and hopefully we can get the answer and resolve those things. So uh, Mir, would you go first and... Uh... Yeah, I think it's, there's, there, there's an overall philosophical difference on on the purpose of fees and i i think that uh you know as they're advertised you know landlord license fee rental registration fee uh that those fees should be specifically tied to that specific process not you know part of one salary or 
we have to respond to this many types of properties. I, those are separate issues. Uh, and, and, and I don't, I don't, I think we need to make sure that the cost analysis is pretty much spot on. You know, I, I'm, I don't, you can set the late fees, whatever you want. I don't care, but I think the initial fee, uh, I think should match the costs directly associated uh, with that process. So that's my piece on that. So you're, you're making a, uh, a case for direct costs should be uh, in, the, in the calculation, but indirect costs should not. Correct. I mean, if you look at other fees that we have, that's pretty much what they do. Um, and, you know, so that's just kind of, I think it should be, all, all fees should have that philosophy. Okay. Um, Julia or Andy, do you want to respond to that? Well, I think, um, you know, certainly that's the, the main goal. And that's why Ron put together uh, the, the sheet that he did. But I think it's, there are other, there are other fees that, that go along with it or, or other dollar um, amounts that go along with it that, um, you know, we, we may not have the same structure that we have um, if it weren't for the work that we're doing in this area. Um, you know, so I, I, I don't think it's as, as you know, as, as clean cut as, um, as just direct costs related to that. Um, Andy, um, feel free yeah. to jump in. So um, just getting down to the actual numbers, uh, the recommendation that is currently in the budget was moving from, um, if we're talking about landlord licenses, was moving from 60 to $75. Um, the document that was sent out yesterday, and I can also pull it up, um, shows a new landlord license cost breakdown at $75.70. Um, so if we think those numbers are accurate in that uh, direct cost analysis, uh, then the proposal of $75 is spot on, but really can't go much higher than that, or shouldn't go much higher than that unless there's um, wage increases. So uh, I know there were some, some questions previously about how we came up with those numbers and such I and mean, we can I can get Ron to hop on and we can break down how you get 30 minutes for each process but those are basically the hourly rates of the people who work for us and the amount of time that they uh, use processing items so um, what what new document was sent out yesterday it wasn't a new document. It was the same document that Ron sent out to the landlords and that he forwarded to you on the 21st. It was the um, just the cost analysis breakdown. Andy, uh, could, you put, so we, could you put that up? Andy? Sure. And Ron is on here, by the way. Keith, can you? Yeah, okay. This is the document that was uh, sent over everyone see this screen right here no Which, mm -hmm. yep okay cool yes. so um total right here is 70 70 uh, 75 70 um and you can see the detail on, on how we came up with that total when you add these items together um we can go over this first um and then we can go over new unit registration cost breakdown if we'd like to um and again, Ron is on here if people would like to um, comment or have some questions about this. Okay. Any questions? No, I, I, okay, that's the one that, that we got the other week. So new landlord license fees, I know, and then also new rental registration fees are you know, where a lot of the initial work is done. That, that I get. As far as uh, renewals, um, you know, it, it's not as much, and, and especially with the new process coming, uh, with the new software, it should be even easier, especially on the finance side, mm -hmm. um, because they're not, you know, they're not making extra copies and 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 doing a lot of extra work, especially if the property owners can go in and into their account and do a lot of the stuff on the front side in the system. 
which is the ultimate goal, correct? Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I, I was going to go down to that mirror, so I'm glad you jumped ahead. So there is the new license registration, and then the page two of this is the breakdown of the landlord license renewal costs. So I'm um, going off of uh, what Muir was mentioning, around the $60 rate is where we should be. Um, and uh, because it's not as uh, time consuming on the finance department, and that's where you get the savings. Um, so it would, so going up to 75 for renewals, um, if, if Muir's um, idea of direct cost analysis uh, is where we wanna be and not using the additional services um, that are required uh, to, to process everything, then, then that's, where, that's where we would fall. So I can scroll back and forth on this document or we can, we can talk about it in more detail. And again, uh, Ron is on here as, as needed to, to talk about process. Well, well, we have a second. There was a comment that came through the chat and it said that this was not the document that, or the numbers that SOPOA received. Is that correct? Ron, do you have um, a comment there? I would pull the document up as long as it wasn't, there was no adjustments made. This is the document that uh, I sent out. Oh, shit. Lynn says difference between 1825 and 1585 for the office manner. Was that the error that you had referenced in the, wasn't there an error that we made? Um, no, that's that not an error. In the first in your budget session. That is not, oh, well, yeah, that okay. is, I didn't, the office manager, the office manager is the only individuals that handle renewals. And, and, and uh, in my response to the initial questions that we received from Ms. Bratton, the, the renewal is, is specifically handled by the office manager, which is why you see 1825. Um, the new landlord uh, re registration and rental registration costs is a combination of the office manager and the administrative assistant, which is why you see a, a lower rate per half hour is a combination of their salaries divided about divided by the amount of time that it takes for each landlord license or renewal or um, new landlord license or new landlord uh, unit. Which is why there's a difference in cost, and that's because there's a breakdown of work in each department. And um, Amber, our administrative assistant, handles multiple other projects, and uh, Trish is solely responsible for renewals. The, the uh, a follow up question Muir had asked is uh, with the new system that we're getting, does that change any of the finance department's position in terms of cost on the renewal? Because are they going to have to touch it? Oh, yeah, they're still going to have to touch it. I mean, I think, you know, just the new system that we're receiving is it's going to take work to implement this registration system on it. Um, it's not, I don't believe that, you know, it, the, the goal, the ultimate goal is to open this system up to allow this registration process through Entergov, uh, which is something that we're going to have to make happen. Um, so I think that there will be time involved. Ultimately, the hope is that that it, that it decreases the amount of time required for this, for, with the software. Um, the question, Ron. If we, okay, we're, we're the new system, will we, we'll be paying more for this system than we would for Munis? No, um, this system is, so right now we're using Comcate for our code enforcement, all of our processing of any code enforcement issues, that type of thing, and specifically only using Munis um, for registrations. Registrations, okay. The uh, EnterGov software will allow us to tie into uh, the Munis system directly. Okay. So, so EnterGov will replace Comcate. Uh, the one important thing to note in budgets in the past few years is EnterGov every year uh, requires a five to six percent increase. Um, 
I was able to negotiate with Comcade this year to, to hold that, uh, but they are planning to implement that next year. So it will continue to increase yearly for that licensing cost. That cost will go away as we transition to Intergov. Um, okay. And with Intergov tying into Munis, it should streamline these processes. The one thing I will say, and this is a mistake on my part with the landlord licensing uh, cost breakdown is when I, when I used direct cost for office manager or office staff in either one of these, I could have included the cost involved for everyone in the department because those are direct costs. Uh, not necessarily code enforcement officers, but the amount of time that I spend with this, the amount of time that Dan spends with this, um, and so on. That is not included in there, and I probably could have included that information in there. When, when the finance department did a complete breakdown of their, um, of their costs, those were included in those numbers. Well, well, if we get the new system, will this stabilize the cost? Or no, I mean. Well, I mean, in, in any fee in, in any government entity or any private entity, yearly, the cost of doing business goes up. And that's the reality. And I think that um, one thing that needs to happen from this point forward is fee, fee structure should be looked at yearly by every department, including mine, so that if there are increases on a yearly basis that they happen and don't happen every three to five years and have you know, a greater impact on the constituents. Well, April, I mean, if, um, I was just gonna say, April, um, if you're asking about, well, adding this software program automate some of our systems so we don't have to have as many touch points as uh, with staff, uh, yes, that would be the goal. That's um, the investment is so that the user will be able to pay more online, similar, basically paying more online doing more activity. There will need to be oversight to that and there's costs associated with Ours is more upfront cost with Intergov to be able to stand that that uh, that system up, and because it's more robust, there's more recurring fees. But that again, that's going to be split because we're adding the permitting side of it for the inspections and permitting piece and infrastructure development. So, to answer your question, yes, but there are because of inflation, just escalating costs. Our recurring fees will just typically incrementally increase, just like everything else does. Yes, so it will. Probably reduce it, but I won't necessarily freeze it. Yeah, I understand. I understand. And I do think it will take time, time and effort to get to that point. Um, I don't think it's going to be a magic switch where it's here where this rolls out. I think it's going to take some time to build that into that system. Um, but it's something that we would work on right away with finance. Questions from other council members, Ms. Angela. There's so much a question as uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to say that my concern is not necessarily that we have to implement a fee or an increase of a fee, but what I'm looking at as we unfold the budget and we're unpacking this whole entire suitcase, I'm looking at, you know, we've got property taxes have increased, our water and sewer has increased, our trash has increased, um, and the rental applications, uh, landlord licensing fees. And, and what it, 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 it's, it looks like that the people who are gonna literally be taxed the most are the people who are the landlords, which ultimately is gonna transition down to the tenants. Yep. Now, we just had this conversation when we had the house fire over on the west side of town about figuring out how to keep people in their housing, appropriate housing, healthy, safe housing. We need, I, I just, I don't know. It just looks like all it, it just seems like all at once. I know it's a COVID year. I know we, I know some of these things were on a point to increase from discussions we had the, the two prior budgets I've been a part of, but this, it does seem to be all at once uh, for a particular group of people. And all of this is just gonna come back. Um, I like to get what a quarterly 
money would be or the amount would be for these fees uh, for a rental property. Um, and I, th I think that's just my general statement. I mean, I understand we need to increase fees, but as you look at the whole picture, it just, it seems like one sector of, of the, uh, of the residents is going to get impacted a little bit more than, than others. Angela, hang on. Um, Angela I, I understand your, your comments about, you know, this being a tough year, it certainly, certainly is, and, and not wanting this to fall on the back of, of, of tenants, but it would be unfair if costs have increased to, um, then put that money on all of the taxpayers because this is one subset of uh, our book of business as, as the city of Salisbury that does not is is not a, a resource that every every citizen gets. It's not trash collection. It's not police and fire. So just because uh, a landlord may pass that on to its tenant does not mean that we shouldn't do this because then then everybody's eating that cost um, because because we're not paying for it adequately. So then the rest, the, the general fund is, is eating that, that money if, if costs are increasing um, would just be what I have to add to that. But you know, I certainly understand that this is a challenging decision. <clears throat> and then Angela, um, if you look at, because you asked what's the quarterly increase, if you go from, I mean, simple math, going from $60 to $75, if that $15 was passed on, to the end user, dollar twenty-five a, a month is what the increase would be if they wanted to pass on that increase in landlord license fees. Um, and then trash, um, you know, if it's four dollars a quarter, you can do the, the math there. And then the water and sewer, that's based off for off of uh, user fees, uh, usage, um, but that is. Uh, Kind of a direct consumption pay that people are going to have and that's not necessarily specific to a rental property andy could i say something i'm, I'm kind of like angela and i know what julie just said but even though we're, we're increasing fees or we're in the act of increasing fees i agree with angela 100 percent they're going to hit the tenant my thing is whether it's a dollar 25 cent per month the tenant is going to take that hit and it's not going to be a dollar and 25 cent a month. It's going to be a lot more, believe it, because the, most of the landlords don't want to take that hit and they've already feel like they've suffered so far with COVID, with back rent and struggling. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm there with Angela in a way. I'm kind of in between because I know some things have to be done. I do know that. I know there have to be increases to maintain the infrastructure and to maintain our city. But we also have to be mindful. And as Julia said, I mean, you know, everybody is not a taxpayer, but even though you may not be a taxpayer, you may not, why, why is it that the people who are less fortunate have to suffer the most? That's yeah. not I think historically, I, I, Andy or Julie, you might know the answer to this. I don't, I don't know the last time that rental registration rates were raised, but I, my, the last thing that I was able to find was around 2017. Um, and, you know, over that four year period or five year period now that we're looking at prior to COVID, I think an interesting question to ask um, landlords is how many fee increases were imposed yearly on rent? And, and, and from 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and then COVID, obviously we know that there were not. Um, in talking with residents or tenants and, you know, the cost of business goes up every year, which is why the cost of rent goes up every year. Um, you know, and I think that as, like I said, as our cost increase, it's something we wanna look at yearly, much like a business owner would. Um, in previous government experiences, that's exactly what we did. Um, that was built into our budget yearly. Uh, could be planned planned easier. Um, when you look at the landlord licensing per se, um, for some of our landlords that have hundreds of properties, if you take that fifteen dollar increase over, um, you know, hundred properties, fifteen dollars, 
you know, it comes down to, uh, you know, a very minute amount for some property owners that have one or two properties, you know, you're looking at 15 or 17, $7 and 50 cents per property. The, the hit is on, you know, the increase is on the unit registration itself. Uh, one thing I did want to clarify uh, a question that I had or had seen an email mirror was um, uh, around, you know, the code enforcement process. Uh, at all costs, we avoid citations. Um, so we are not attempting to collect fees from property owners based off of citations. We utilize the uh, corrective action letter process uh, to help rectify the situation before we get to that point. Um, and our, our citation numbers in wanting to work with the public through code enforcement have decreased greatly. So, Michelle, we haven't heard from you. Um, you have comments relative to this issue? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a tricky situation, um, but, you know, when it comes to, I, I know that landlords are going to try to pass these on to tenants, but it's also not fair to ask the city to subsidize said landlords or other city residents to subsidize those landlords. So, you know, I, I, I don't see this, it's, it, we're not asking for a huge increase here. I don't, I, I just, I don't see it as unreasonable. Um, and it, there's obviously a, a, a direct tie to what the costs of, of running the show are. So, you know, I, I don't, you know, if, if the landlords don't want the bad press of, of passing it on to tenants, then maybe they should eat the cost. But I mean, I, I just, I don't see it as unreasonable. Um, but, you know, that's just my take on it. Um, other than that, I, re I really don't have any other questions or comments. Jack, you're muted. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I, I really don't have issues with the fees per se, because they haven't been adjusted in, in a while. And that's our fault. And the suggestion of reviewing them on a yearly basis certainly makes a lot of sense to me. Um, my issue, and we're talking about companies and the way cost-based and all this, and I agree with it. Um, I, I'm struggling with the fact that everything I've heard, what's the return on investment? of this $174,000 that we're going to invest in this system. Because the prices, the, the, if the work has been done to look at the system and play with the system, we should have a fairly good idea of what the results of the, of the system are. So mine is more of a global thing. Um, I would anticipate that if the thing works the way it's been described, the process should be simpler, which should offset some of the increases in the costs. And I don't see it. Well, Jack, um, I mean, we pull the trigger on this thing, or we start the ball rolling once, um, you know, if, if, if we get a budget amendment passed in, in a week or two, um, you know, it will take time to build out the workflow for Salisbury specifically in our departments. Um, I, you know, whether we have a couple months under our belt before the March uh, proposed uh, increase goes into place for landlord registration fees, um, we'll probably have a few months under our belt with, with build out time and things like that. Um, so whether we see a, a decrease in time this year, I, I probably, 
I, I don't, I can't speak to that next year. Would we see that in FY or, or for 23, uh, 2023, potentially. Um, and I think Ron's point is, is right to look at this every year. And if, if we do see, which, which we hope to see, um, you know, an increase in efficiency from this system, um, I wouldn't have a problem coming back to you and cutting fees. I mean, that's not, uh, we've, we've done that before with, with water fees and things like that. Uh, we have been known to cut fees here. Um, so I wouldn't have any issue doing that if, if that's what the numbers show. Uh, but we do have to build the workflow, test it, um, and, and see where we land. But I do think that's where we'll, we will be, um, along with having uh, greater connectivity between, between departments and having other departments be able to use this software as well. Um, from my perspective, um, you know, we have, this is going to come up in two weeks. Uh, from my perspective, I would, I would ask that we look at the renewal fee based on the, the form that we just saw mm -hmm. and see if there can be something done on the renewal fee. Cause that's the one, if I have any issues at all with the fee itself, it's that one. Um, as opposed to the new one. So if you could look at that and, and just come back and, and see what you find uh, at the work session, um, then I think we might. And if you come back and say, you know, that's what it is, that's fine. That's your, that's your prerogative and, and we can vote on it. Um, but if there's something to be done, I think that, um, in my mind, especially if it's a renewal, that system should really lower the price. So uh, please look at that and then come back uh, at, the, at the work session. Um, does, I'd like to know if the rest of the council is comfortable with that kind of an approach. I am. Mayor? Uh, yeah, I'm good with that. April? Um, heck, I am. Angela? Yes. Michelle? Sounds good. Okay. Uh, um, Mr. President, just uh, yeah. as you guys are going into um, deliberations, we will find out what, what those fees are. Um, high level impacts, um, the rental registration proposal from 60 to 75 across the board. So all collective, most of that is renewals rather than new. It's about $150,000 of new revenue. So um, what, if we come back and say, we wanna just do new at 75 and all of renewals are 60, it will impact the budget we propose to you, $100,000, $125,000. So we'll have to um, take that into consideration and go back and decide what we wanna do in terms of funding things, because it will- That's, yeah. that's fine, so, that's, exactly, that's exactly what I'd like to see. Okay. Okay. Any other questions uh, regarding the fee structures? Okay. I have yeah. one other suggestion, and you know, yeah. you're looking at other fees uh, that that they were talking about. So, when was the last time we increased the foreclosed property registration? Uh, when was the last time uh, we we uh, looked at the reinspection fee, the vacant building registration? Uh, and even the late fees. So uh, I would say take a look at all of those. Uh, those because you know some things that impact communities and neighborhoods more are foreclosed properties and vacant buildings. They impact property value so much when you have a street that has three or four vacant homes on it or foreclosed properties. Everybody's home values goes down. So I would also take a look at at those fees as well. Because th those impact neighborhoods just as much as some of the other issues we've been talking about. I agree, Mayor. Okay. I think that's a, that's a good suggestion as well. Um, you know, it, this is, this is uh, we knew this was gonna be tough this year. Uh, it's been a rough year all around. And um, we knew we were going to have to make some tough decisions. So we're in the middle of it. Uh, 
and I think the more the more information and data we have, the easier it might be. Might be. It may not be easy, but it it may uh, make us feel a little bit different about the way we look at it. Um, so if there's no other issue on fees, uh, I think we should probably go back up to your sheet maybe and take a look at those, those three items that are up there. Keith. Um, Julia, can we hear from you first on, on, could you rank these? <laughs> the, the three that are, are here? Yeah. Um, well, so, um, you know, I think, uh, holding the line on, on cheap internet is always important if, if you have, uh, the ability to keep the rate you're paying. Um, and not be, uh, uh, you know, taken under the thumb by Comcast uh, in the future. But, um, you know, the, the deputy fire inspector, um, they're, uh, I think were, I think Andy said, 31 positions that were asked for this year. Um, and that's, inc that's including the seven frozen police officers. Um, and so we know that there are immense needs uh, throughout the city. And uh, if, if you were going to ask us what the, what the next position that Andy and I would recommend, um, it would not be the deputy fire marshal uh, inspector. Um, I think uh, Chief and I have discussed a plan to move forward with training some, some firefighters that are on staff uh, to, to, to go to the training, to shadow Eric Kramer, our fire inspector, and to, to start to prepare for this, this move down the road if needed. Um, but I don't, I don't think, um, it's, it's not a recommendation right now to, to move forward with it. And I think we can accomplish some of the backup um, duties that, that we do need to put in place for Eric with the staff that we have um, that are um, uniformed firefighters. So uh, if, if that wasn't taken into, into consideration, then the, the revenue would also go away. Um, okay. Uh, questions about or comments about relative to that position? Um, I'll start uh, this time because um, uh, I, I think that I, I, I agree we may need it but I don't think we can afford it this year. Um, and I, I think I like the fact that if we could um, take some of the individuals uh, who would uh, apply for this position from internally uh, and then let them ride with, with Eric on some, some of the inspections, um, that would probably help and uh, next year, when we can afford it, hopefully, um, then they would be ready. So I, I would say no on this position myself. Mir. So I, I guess one question I have, if you know, not moving forward with this, with having the firefighters right along, are we ultimately looking at? Uh, certifying them as fire inspectors and then at some point as inspectors they could go out on their own and do their own inspections is that is that the ultimate goal with that I, I think the ultimate goal is to to start to build the bench um for <clears throat> if if this position was funded down the road um or if eric you know went out for a vacation for two weeks you'd have the, somebody to have the ability to to fill in um, so it wouldn't just come to a standstill. Um, I, I, I don't know if, if chief would, would build it so that, you know, when we're, we're down on calls or whenever, that, not that that happens, but that, that we'd send out, um, inspectors, you know, without Eric, 
Um, I think it, there would be a lot of, of shadowing and things like that uh, in the beginning. And then just, um, you know, I guess building into the schedule sometimes for them to, to go out and get that experience. Yeah, um, I guess my question was if, you know, if we, if we have a couple of people that are kind of like cross-trained as fire mm -hmm. inspectors and they're able to see how many additional inspections that they get and we can look at the revenue piece of it, does that, mm -hmm justify ultimately adding in that position i mean i know you got twenty five hundred dollars in revenue but i mean if if he was if we had a deputy fire inspector in full force do, do we have an idea on on what the revenue piece of it would be uh i can't i can't speak to that because i i was um I didn't hear his conversation on this piece with you all. I don't know what I was doing. Um, so I don't know if he's just proposing $2,500 in increases or if that's for something else. Um, but I, I, I don't know how much we would, we would rake in, not rake in, but, you know, bring in um, if we had an additional person out doing this, um, you know, 40 hours a week, um, I'd have to, I'd have to ask him. Well, it's, it's certainly not going to be equal to the, the cost. I, I guys, I, I really do think it's uh, what Keith has highlighted on our screen as the additional revenue. We don't we don't make a lot of money off of same thing with inspections. So if it's twenty dollars an inspection, twenty five hundred, it's two hundred fifty a year. Well, whatever that number is, one hundred twenty five a year. So it's not a lot of revenue um, to offset uh, the additional position. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, where you're going to save is the safety and the lack of, hopefully, the fewer fires. Right. Um, you know, that's 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 what should be. But um, I think in this particular case, uh, I think the, the the plan that Julie just spoke about is is a good one. Um, so that would be my position. Um, April, what do you what's your feeling? I, I, your, your sentiments exactly. I just feel the same way you feel, Jack. We can't afford it. We just can't. I mean, we're struggling um, and we're trying to increase fees. So, you know, I just yeah. don't think this is affordable right now. It is a position that is necessary, um, but it's quite a bit of money. Angela? I would, I would concur. I think that um, I do like what Julie is saying about building the bench and, you know, if there's a way to incorporate, um, you know, sharing those duties or learning those duties for right now, and maybe in the future being in a better place to look at funding that, I, I would agree with that. Thank you. Michelle? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a pretty hefty price tag, so... I'd say we probably can't afford that right now. Thank you. Um, and then we're, we're talking about the licenses and, and that we'll have more data on that on, on Monday. So um, is everyone is everyone prepared? We can spend another probably half hour or hour on uh, the notes that everyone took. Um, during the personnel committee. Um, Keith, there's nothing else that we put on the list, correct? Those are the items that I heard that we wanted posted to the uh, worksheet. Right, okay. Um, I'm looking at my list now. I have a note here about uh, copay for counseling. Does anybody remember what that is from the government office building? Yeah, the recommendation was for um, the city to cover copays for um, mental health appointments with psychiatrists or psychologists. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got that.
field ops. We had the, um, we took care of the truck situation. Um, That's where the ramp, I think, came in, if I'm not mistaken, Jack, for the Poplar Hill Mansion. Jana. Yeah. Yeah, ramp and ramp versus lift. Yeah. Well, we found out that they they cannot do the ramp. I, I, Sarah told me that they cannot do the ramp, so they have to do the lift. Right, that's what she told me. I just didn't know where the funding was, if it was coming through a grant or if it was, that was well, my only question. I knew I knew that they had decided to go with the lift because it was less impact and it was, it, the ramp was. The issue I think, uh, Andy or Julia can correct me if I'm wrong, that the, the money that was for the ramp or lift was used on something else and only left half the amount that they need for the lift. Does that make sense? I'd have to double check that, um, but I think um, a previous uh, line item um, rehab project um, came in under budget. So they forward funded that with right. money that they had available. So yeah, I think they need a little bit more um, and they were and they're um, projected a little bit lower than what it ended up coming at, in at. So there's, I don't have that exact amount to, to purchase the lift um, to make that account full, but. Um, can we get that for the last, for that last adjustment meeting, maybe? Sure, I can find out where we're at. Great. I, I think also if we, I think this is something we could seek some donations from the community on too. Mm -hmm. I think we should actively pursue that. I agree with I you. Yeah. yeah, I know that they've had trouble because of COVID. They a lot of their their internal funding comes from holding events and that sort of thing. And because there were no events to be held, they I know that they were really hurting in their budget for the uh, for funding. So, yeah, I think that would be that would be something would probably be a good a good idea. Um, I don't have anything, anything else on my list other than what we just talked about and the uh, three that are up there. Um, anybody else have any issues that they, they have on their lists mm -hmm. here? No, I, you know, the lift to Poplar Hill was one. I think everybody had that. And I think we've, you know, any questions I I had or issues I had, I think, you know, we've, uh, it, it was either answered during presentations or uh, they've, they've answered them and, and we figured it out. Okay, thank you. April? I'm same here. Okay, Angela? Same thing. I'm okay. fine for right now. Okay, Michelle. Same. I'm good. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, Julia, thank you. Ron, um, Andy. Um, could you take down the uh, Keith? Could you take down the thing so we can see everybody? Yeah, I have one. I have one thing too. I'd like to hit Council oh. President. That, um, Go ahead. Sorry, Keith. I have it down on you. It's a procedure um, procedure item. If we if we do choose not to wrap it today and we go to the 18th, then I think um, Ms. Nichols had a second date. It was in the middle of June that because uh, it would be it, I think it would be tight to uh, try to uh, still do one week later for the budget book and everything for the 24th. So, what was it? Do you know that other date? Um, it was the 14th. Yeah. So I would propose if we if we are going to use that 18th uh, session that we, uh, we 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 move the um, the ordinance to the 14th of June. That makes That's sense. Of the, of the entire budget. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes sense. So. 
Jack, I, um, if there's consensus there, I have one other issue to, to bring up that just arose. Um, so um, uh, Joe Rupo, who is the, works with Christine Chestnut in the Housing and Homelessness Division, um, recently applied for his master's in social work at Salisbury University. Uh, Joe is a tremendous employee um, and he uh, was unaware of our tuition reimbursement program, which is 75% um, of uh, your tuition. Um, he missed the deadline. We don't have to put it in, um, but Joe is a, a, a really stellar employee that, that we uh, would like to keep happy. Um, so if, if we were to make an exception and add in um, that reimbursement piece, it's approximately $12,000 uh, for a year of tuition. Um, so if, if that's something you're, you're willing to consider, um, we can, can play around with the numbers and uh, along with the, the fee discussion as well. Yeah, if we can do it, that would be, that would be fine. Kim, uh, as we do every year, could you look at our budget and see if there's any room in there for anything. Um, I, I assume we're gonna be doing more traveling, but maybe not as much as we used to. Uh, that's one area that you got that, actually that's the only area we've got, uh, I think that, uh, that has any, any room. Um, and I would, I would ask that um, other departments do the same thing and see if there's a, a few dollars here and there uh, if everybody gave a little, then it would be a lot, a lot easier. Hey, Kim. Um, also, in our budget, what about the device uh, piece? I don't. Does anybody having issues with their devices? I'm fine. I'm so fine. I, I don't. I don't need anything, and I don't know if anybody else. No, I think I can last another two year. Year. So, so I mean, I, you know, I, I'm I, good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have it in front of me, but. That might be uh, an okay. area where we can we can take out for that to it. Like what, seventeen hundred or something? I'll do yeah. that. Well, it's so. seventeen hundred because uh, I don't think I don't I don't need anything. Angela, you you okay? I know Michelle said she's okay. Yeah, my my device issues are usually um, you know user problems. <laughs> we can't fix that for you. I'm sorry. My <laughs> better. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe that falls under training. <laughs> we'll have to. We'll have to see. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We I appreciate it. Um, uh, we have some information that is going to be due to us uh, next at the work session, and then we'll take it from there and then uh, wrap it up at the uh, at the last meeting. And what you only should have a couple of items and, and we should uh, get through this. So thank you very much. Any, uh, any other comments, Julia? Uh, Jack, just for clarity, um, when you say uh, the work session, do you mean next Tuesday's schedule budget meeting or that's when we're going to dig into the rest of this or maybe I'm confused. Yeah, that's, that's the last, that's the, the last one. If you, yeah, the yeah if they could, if you, if you could get the information though, the day before, that would help, that would be helpful. Okay, sure. Okay. And then we'll wrap it up next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Thanks everybody. Thank you everyone. Have a great, uh, have a great week. Take care.